Everybody. Thank you for downloading this mini movie review. This one is on 2015's Tag, Japanese suspense action horror art film. This is not the 2018 comedy or whatever. This is a Japanese horror film. I'm watching it on Netflix. Please bear with me and <laughs> be um, forgiving on how I will pronounce some of these names. I'm reading some of the information about it off of Wikipedia. So here we go. Tag is also known in Japan as Real Anagako. It's, uh, like I said, a 2015 Japanese suspense action horror art film. It was directed by Sion Sono. It was inspired by the title of a novel called Riaru Anagako by Yasuki Yamada. It was released in Japan on July 11th, 2015, and it has a theme song called Real Anagako, and it was written and performed for the movie by the rock band Glim Spanky. Never heard of them, but that's cool. I'm excited to hear this theme song. This movie stars Rihanna Trindle, uh, Mariko Shinoda, and Arena Mano. It was uh, produced by Cidic Du Incorporated. It runs 85 minutes. It is in Japanese, and I will watch it in Japanese uh, with subtitles. It's much more fun that way. There are lots of good subtitle movies out there, so if, if that's what puts you off to certain movies, give it a whirl. Because there, I mean, there's some really good ones out there. Hopefully, this one will be one of them. Basically, the plot here, just a light thing about it. There's a high school girl named Mitsuko, and she survives like this accident, and she gets put into all these different crazy situations and realities where each of the scenarios end really badly. So this will be interesting. I like that kind of like it, it sounds kind of crazy, which sounds fun. So I'm excited to see it. I'm going to go check out Tag, and I will be back and let you know what I think. Hey guys, we got a lot to talk about with this movie. It's really fun, actually, so... Here we go. Uh, so for 2015's Tag, here we go. Japanese horror movies can be really fun. They're just, sometimes they're really out there. And I knew that some of this was going to get a little crazy. It had me from the beginning. So so yeah, so Mitsuko is the main girl. And the, the woman who played her, she did a great job. There was another character, Aki, who's like her best friend, that I thought she I liked her a lot. And then Sir was really fun. Um, she was kind of the tough girl. But I want to talk about this opening scene. So there's definitely going to be spoilers for this movie. Here we go. So it starts out, it's very ideal, nice forest area. And there's two buses. And they're full of schoolgirls. And they're supposed to be going on some school trip. And uh, this movie should also be titled Feathers because there's a lot of feathers. And I'm sure with some of the feathers and the colors, there's supposed to be some symbolism there. I, it's very pretty. I, I don't know if I get all of it, but I get some of it. Uh, but there's definitely a lot of symbolism in this movie. Um, there's also kind of a, a couple other things in the movie I'll mention. But anyway, so they're, they're on this bus and they're driving. Misuko is writing poetry in her book like we all did in high school. Come on, guys. It's real, like, just serene and calm, and you're like, oh, no. And right away, I'm like, something's... Everyone's so happy. There's just, like, happy music. And there's also some other music that sounded really familiar to me, and it kept bothering me. And I'll get to that in a second, because I was like, I know this music. Anyway, so they're driving along, and the bus in front of them is full of girls who are like, oh, my God, we're so happy. You know, everyone's happy. All of a sudden, the wind blows, and the bus in front of them splits in half. And everything from the bus, the half bodies of these girls and the bus itself come flying at the next bus behind them and takes them out too. And Mitsuko lives because she drops her pin and bends down amongst all the feathers because somehow there's, there's like some pillows and everyone's having a pillow fight all the time. And so she bends down to get her pin that she dropped. And when she does, this happens and everyone gets cut in half or decapitated. And the entire bus, it's just, it's so fast and... There is some pretty fake looking CGI on some of it, but it's not horrible. But it was, I was laughing. I was having a great time. 
I was blown away a little bit. I was like, what? Like, it was just out of nowhere. And so both buses get taken out this way. Blood everywhere. She's covered in blood. Everyone's cut in half. She stands up. She's like, what? You know, she, she don't know. And the bus slowly slows down somehow and stops and she gets off the bus and there's just wind and all the cables are snapping off of like the side of the electric poles but it's something in the wind it's something at first I'm like killer leaves what is happening but it's like something in this wind and the accident was so stupid I don't understand how this wind did it and it was but it was so fun and it was just so crazy and I loved it right away I was like okay okay I'm in so again the music there's this music a lot in the beginning and I'm like what is that I know that music I'm like, I know it's not that band, Glim Spanky, which actually, the rest of their music they did, I, I liked it. It was a good, like, psychedelic kind of rock stuff, so it worked. Um, but anyway, they kept playing this part over and over, and I was like, what is that? So after 10 minutes in the movie, I was like, I gotta pause it and find out. So I go, and I look it up, and it's part of the score from The Walking Dead. And I was like, ah, that's it. I've only seen every episode of The Walking Dead. So I was like, that's why I can't get it out of my head. So that was a little annoying because they did play it a little, couple more times later in the movie, and I was like, okay, but it, it wasn't horrible. I was just like, that's weird. So yeah, so then it just goes from there, and she she's basically walking through different realities um, for the rest of the movie. Next, she she walks up to this boarding school, or not really a boarding school, more like a private school for all girls, and she sees her friends, and some of them that were supposedly, I think, on the bus? I'm not sure. I don't think they might have been, I, I, but they're friends of hers, and that's when you meet, like, Aki and all of them. It's kind of speculated that Aki has a crush on Mitsuko, and that they may become a couple, so then they're, you know, they're kind of, like, together, and then you got the other girls and stuff, and so they end up, like, skipping class, because... Mitsuko looks terrified. She's in shock. She already went amongst all the dead bodies and changed her shirt and washed herself in a river, wandered away back onto this school. And she's like, what? Where am I? You know, what's happening? And Aki is like, you need to calm down. It's okay. And she told her she had this dream about the wind trying to kill people. So she calms her down. And then the four girls, Taiko, Aki, Sir, and Mitsuko, skip class and go down to this lake. And they're all like hanging out and they're talking about just different things. And then Sir, who's kind of like the kind of tough chick, she starts talking about infinite realities and things when they start talking about her dream. And so she starts, they just have like this deep, like kind of Carl Sagan-esque type conversation about just different realities and how you can change things. And, the, and there's, again, during this, they go through different scenarios. A pillow shows up, they have a pillow fight thing again. Sir gets too close to the lake and then this alligator that's very bad CGI comes out and is like biting her in between her legs and she's screaming and there's all this blood and then it disappears and it's like that's one reality you know that kind of thing so it's kind of fun um then running through the woods the woods were very pretty and so far it's pretty it's back to being calm again Mitsuko's starting to calm down she's like well maybe it really was just a dream and I'm just losing it so they go back up to the class because first period's almost over. They skip the first period. And they go into their class and they're all hanging out in the classroom and there's the one teacher that had caught them running down to the lake and couldn't catch them and just like was like, whatever. She's in this like kind of businessy suit thing and, and learning and you know, they're teaching the class and everything and they're learning. I'm like, okay, well, what's what's gonna happen now? The teacher asked them, she's like, where did you guys go? Why did you, where did you run off? And then their Aki was like, well, we were dizzy. And I'm like, all four of you were dizzy? Okay. So all of a sudden... Everyone starts getting shot. Like all the girls are, and it was a it was a good scene. Like all the girls are like, oh my god, you know, like, and I'm like, what is happening? Who's shooting them? And you look up, and it's the teacher, and she's got this Gatlin gun, and she's just like, and everyone's getting shot, including Aki and everything, but not Mitsuko. She never like gets hit. And then all the teachers are going after these girls, and it's crazy, and everyone's running around. And there's some bad CGI here too, but there's also some other good scenes. And then the girls are all running through the front of the building and all the teachers are in the windows taking them out and it's just crazy. And then the, well, the, the girls are telling Mitsuko she needs to make a distraction and get them out of there. And she's like, I don't know what I'm doing, you know, like she's running. And then all the three girls, the, the other three girls with them get cut in half by the wind and she, or the other four girls and then she makes it. It's like another reality. And she's like, what is happening? Up until that part, like, the, the part in the woods did kind of lull the movie a little bit before it kicks back into high gear, but it did kind of build the, the alternate realities, which was kind of fun. Anyway, so, yeah, it was just crazy, the whole gun thing. It was like, and lots of feathers everywhere. And then, so she keeps running, and she ends up in, like, another situation here where 
she shows up and now she's a new character. She's Kiko. And when she looks in the mirror, she turns into Kiko. And apparently it's Kiko's wedding day. And this is when I noticed watching it that it was, there was all women. There has so far has not been any man in this movie. And I also noticed a lot of how this film was shot. Because a lot of these schoolgirls, their skirts are kind of high. But the way that the camera angles, there's a lot of like, like them holding hands and giggling and a lot of under the, the skirt kind of shots. And I was kind of like a little uncomfortable, like, okay, what's with all these skirt shots? What's happening? I'm not liking, I have a feel, I'm not sure if it has to do with the movie or this is the director, but I was like, I don't know, maybe this is something I'm missing, but there's gotta be something to it. And so part of me was like, I kind of had this thought, I was like, what if there's like a bunch of guys watching them from like a bubble or something and just being gross because so far we haven't seen any men kind of had that in the back burner i was like okay well hopefully i'm not right i don't know so now she's this chick kiko it's her wedding day there's all these women she gets there they're gonna try to put her in a dress she's supposed to be getting married to some guy they're bringing the groom there and i'm like oh cool maybe we'll see a man probably not but we'll see and it's just it's all women in the church and everything and they're getting kiko ready and that's when she sees a key and she's like oh my god, it's a key, a key, and a key knows that there's this alternate reality, and she's like, shut up, I'll talk to you in a second. So they get her all ready, and that's when a key's like, yeah, you can do whatever you want to these women, and they get her in the wedding dress, and then a key just starts like ripping people up. She's like breaking arms and bloods everywhere, and they're just like cracking everyone's necks, and then they go into the wedding, and she gets up there, and all the girls are all like, whoop, whoop, you got this. And then by the end, they're calling her like an evil bitch or something and like throwing stuff at her. And, and they start stripping their clothes off. Like it gets, it gets real crazy. And then she gets up to the front and there's this coffin. And I'm like, okay, maybe the groom's in there. And then it is. And like you open it up and it's a guy or just a, a fig, a man or it could be a woman. I don't know who has like his nasty pig face on with this tongue hanging out. She's supposed to kiss it. And she's got this bottle and then she stabs the pig and then that's when the two teachers from the school show up and they're like doing this whole like matrix kill bill thing and then there's like this fight scene between mitsuko and aki and these two women and the church and it's just it's just crazy everything's all over the place it's really fun and there's still no dudes and so they're fight 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 aki is like i'll distract them go and so she starts running and that's when she ends up on this bridge and there's this other girl who's like come with me and then she's in this race And she's like, what? And she's running and now she's Azumi. She's another person. And she looks in the mirror and she turns into a mirror that's going by. And she turns into Azumi and she's running in this race. And she has all these memories with these girls um, of how they would train and stuff like that. And that's when like Aki is explaining to her that she's, she's ultimately Masuko. She's all these other characters, but she's saying that they're watching, that someone's watching them. And I'm like, okay, we're getting to something here. And that they're going to keep on trying to kill her unless Masuko as the main character does something to change it. And so they get through this race and then the, the Matrix chicks are ta- chasing them and the pig guy is doing like backflips and chasing them. So then she ends up running as far as she can into this cave and then this woman or this other girl like drags her in there and then it's all the girls from the bus and they're all doing like the ring thing with the hair in front of their face and they want her to die. And then again, Aki comes and saves her and gets her out and is like, you're Mitsuko, this is what's happening. And then there's this real freaky part where she's like, she's got these, Aki's got these cables in her arms. One is red and one is blue and she's like, you have to pull these cables and get rid of me so you can open up this portal and go back and go change and stuff. And she's like, I don't want to do it, you know, and stuff. And they're yelling. And then it was gross. Like she grabs the cables and it, I wasn't expecting it, but it pulls up through the skin on her arms instead of pulling the cord out. And I was like, oh, like it was like real crazy. And then there's all these blue and red cables that kind of were like veins and, and arteries just leading into this portal. And so she goes to the portal and that's when I was like, oh no, I think I'm right. So she goes into this portal and now it's guys. And this whole place is called Men's World. And I'm like, oh no. And just all these men, and they're kind of implying that they're doing some uh, perverted or lewd acts towards pictures of Mitsuko and her as Azumi and her as Kiko. And it's in front of this poster advertisement and it's just a real dingy city. And this poster advertisement is for a legendary violent 3D survival horror video game called Tag. And she's the three characters that are playable in it. And now I was like, oh man, I think I'm right. (laughs) I think the guys are kind of being gross towards this. It's some sort of weird game. And that would explain some of the shots in the game. So she comes across this guy who steps out there and he's like, hey, you're here. This is the future. And she's like, what? And then she passes out finally. Because I feel like she probably should have done that before. She was in a lot of shock. 
She passes out, she wakes back up, and it's similar to this cave she was in, but now it's like a temple. And then there's all these girls in these, like, kind of cut-out spots in the temple, like, up on display cases. And some are her, and some are a key, and some are in wedding dresses. And it's all the characters that are, like, mannequins. And then there's this old man, and he's playing this really ancient video game-looking thing on this old TV as he's playing all the characters of her. And so then this man, who looks, like, real old, even though I think it's the young guy dressed up in it, and he's like, hey, you're in the future. 150 years ago, when you were a girl, I, I liked you as a student. And then when you died, which I guess she died in the bus crash still. I don't know. I don't know how she died. They don't really explain it. It's fine. I'm, I'm fine with that. He just happened to get her DNA and all of her friends and make clones for this 3D game. And then the younger version who was in the men's world of this guy comes out and he takes off his clothes, except for his underwear, and he lays down in this bed and he's like, now we're going to fulfill my deepest wish. And I want you to get in this bed with me and, you know, like, let's do this. And she's like, what? And she lays down she decides she needs to do something drastic. That was something that Sir was saying in the beginning, which her name is short for Surreal, which she's explaining like, your life is surreal, all this stuff. And Sir's like, you have to do something drastic to change this. And so she starts freaking out. And of course the pillows start flying again. The pillows turn red or the feathers turn red. And she starts like going off on him and saying to stop playing with girls like toys. So she decides to kill herself. So in each of the scenes, so she does this where she, she stabs herself with the old man's cane. She stabs herself with the bottle. She just starts committing suicide in all the different scenes. Then she wakes up. She's alone in this field of white snow. She gets up and she runs away and realizes that it's all over. And so by sacrificing herself, she was able to, I guess, reset everything or change her destiny. It ends at that. And I actually, I enjoyed it. I thought this was a fun movie. It's definitely different. The actresses did well. I, I like the storyline was fun. I kind of was hoping that her and Aki would run right off into the sunset together, but they didn't. It was uh, it was pretty good. So if I had to rate 2015's tag, I mean, definitely check it out. There really wasn't too much bad with it. And even though the CGI was a little bad, it was still really fun. I, I mean, give it a whirl, definitely. I'm going to rate it out of pillows. Uh, so out of pillows for 2015's tag, I will give it six and a half pillows out of ten. Could maybe go even higher. I don't know. I had a good time. I realize now a lot of my ratings don't mean anything. I might even go back and change a few of my ratings from the past, but whatever. Give it a whirl. 2015's tag. Check it out. It's pretty fun. Thank you so much for downloading and listening to this mini movie review.